You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. The restaurant business is tough. Although the claim that 90% of restaurants fail is exaggerated, it might feel that way to the people who have lost their business. Popular places with good food can still run into trouble, as these restaurants can attest. Here are 10 beloved restaurants that sadly didn't survive the past decade. I just hope we will be worthy of your sacrifice. No more Jamie's Italian. No! 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 You can find decent Italian restaurants all around the world. But sadly, you can no longer find the Jamie's Italian chain of restaurants in the United Kingdom and a slew of other locations around the globe. Because after 11 years, they stopped operations in 2019. While you can still find a couple of locations of the restaurant open at this time, these locations are actually owned by a different company. Celebrity chef Jamie Oliver had to start closing down Jamie's Italian locations back in 2017. That year, he closed six of the 42 locations in the United Kingdom. Oliver was actually sincerely puzzled by all of this, stating he honestly didn't know what happened and that he was still trying to work it all out. He went on to cite rent costs, rates, food costs, Brexit, an increase to the minimum wage, all as factors to the decline of the restaurants, finally stating there was a lot going on. It's too much! It's all too much! Oliver had established the goal of disrupting the mid-market dining experience in the United Kingdom with superior ingredients and great service. It sounds like Jamie Oliver and the restaurant chain's employees had every reason to think they would be successful. Ultimately, however, approximately 1,000 employees lost their jobs. The fact that a well-known Italian restaurant sadly didn't survive the past decade has to make you wonder how any restaurant survives as long as they do. I'm rooting for ya! Gordon Ramsay's Fat Cow What did you just call me? It seems surprising that a restaurant owned by a celebrity chef of Gordon Ramsay's stature sadly couldn't last the decade, or even more than two years after opening in Los Angeles in 2012. While some of the employees who worked at Fat Cow claimed the restaurant was doing good, this eatery simply ran into more roadblocks than it could handle. Problems began when contractors sued the restaurant, claiming that they were still owed more than $43,000 for the work they'd completed. At one point, employees filed a lawsuit against the restaurant, complaining that Ramsey failed to pay them the minimum wage and overtime. As if those legal challenges weren't enough, after the closure of the restaurant, the landlord sued for not having been paid more than $50,000 in rent. Let's get down to brass tacks. I think that we might be in trouble. Critic took their shots as well, like one report which referred to Fat Cow as a low experience and a cynical exercise. Alongside all this was Ramsey's business partner in this venture, who Ramsey would go on to heap a fair share of the blame on, claiming that his business partner was lying about everything and that the restaurant closure was more so all his fault. Give up. Good move. Leave the cooking to the real chefs. Perhaps Ramsey will find greener pastures in the Los Angeles restaurant scene, but for Fat Cow, the party ended years ago. The troubled eatery closed its doors for the last time in March 2014. Whether it really was all Ramsey's business partner's fault or just a perfect storm of misfortunes, either way, Fat Cow is no more. The Gamble on Kenny Rogers Roasters If you're familiar with the 1990s sitcom Seinfeld, you might remember the episode where Jerry Seinfeld's friend Kramer gets himself hooked on the chicken at Kenny Rogers Roasters. Is that Rogers chicken? Oh, get that out of here. Yeah. The man makes a pretty strong bird. The chain of fast food chicken restaurants was founded in 1991 by the country music star Kenny Rogers and a former Kentucky Fried Chicken CEO, John Y. Brown Jr. Kenny Rogers Roasters offered wood-fired rotisserie chicken and a variety of sides to customers. This was in contrast to places like KFC that specialized in more greasy fried chicken. Which sometimes is a good thing. Kenny Rogers Roasters offered a healthier eating experience than much of its competition and used the tagline, less fat, less salt, less calories, to promote it. The company found some success in the 1990s and expanded its number of stores to more than 400, which included locations in the United States and around the world. However, by 2000, it had filed for bankruptcy and cut its number of stores to 90. Almost half of these locations were operating in the United States. 
In 2008, the fast food chain was sold to an investment group that continued operations of the company, but mostly in Asia. So, you know, silver linings. The last Kenny Rogers Roasters in the U.S. closed in 2011, but Malaysia and the Philippines continue to open stores. After his unfortunate passing in March of 2020, the late, great Kenny Rogers will always be remembered for his music, but also, to a lesser extent, for his foray into the restaurant business. Guy's American Kitchen and Bar Sadly, Guy Fieri's Times Square restaurant in Manhattan didn't survive the last decade. It may have suffered the fate of too many good restaurants, exorbitant rents that put a lot of pressure on a business's bottom line. Guy's American Kitchen and Bar seemed like the kind of place tourists would flock to as they hustled to get a bite of the Big Apple. And it seems like they did, because Guy's American Kitchen and Bar was listed as the 39th most successful eatery in America. Are you sure about that? Even with these accolades, it closed for good in December 2017. The question is, how much money does a restaurant need to bring in to stay profitable in one of the world's most expensive pieces of real estate? A lot, apparently. So what happened? According to some articles, the Times Square restaurant received more than its share of negative attention on social media for its unconventional menu and spotty service. Fieri has had some other restaurant troubles recently, as his earliest enterprise, Tex Wasabi, closed its last remaining location in California at the end of 2019. May she rest in peace. Guy Fieri seems like a nice guy, and he hosts a popular show on the Food Network called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. So all we can do is wonder what his next restaurant project will be. I just want it to go well. Fingers crossed. Colicchio and Sons. Can you believe how much this is gonna cost? Colicchio and Sons was established in 2010 in the exclusive Manhattan neighborhood of Chelsea, New York. Chef and owner Tom Colicchio was forced to bow to the inevitable and close his restaurant's doors for good in September 2016. Colicchio had previously run a steakhouse in the same space that was called Craft Steak, but customers' appetites for $100 steaks were sliced severely during the recession. A number of professional restaurant critics gave the exclusive eatery good reviews, but this wasn't enough to insulate it from the troubles it was about to face. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. When the economy started to slow down in 2014, both prices and portion sizes were reduced, but these steps proved to be insufficient to stem the losses in revenue. Colicchio has had restaurants before this one and will have other restaurants going forward. However, it is worth noting that a popular celebrity chef couldn't make a restaurant work in a wealthy part of New York City. Damn shame. A damn shame. Four Seasons for Closing The Four Seasons opened in Manhattan in 1959 and, in the decades since, had come to define culinary excellence in a city with countless upscale restaurants. The New York publishing sector, countless celebrities, and every president since it opened except Richard Nixon visited the Four Seasons. That's why it's so important. But by 2018, even the owners of a restaurant with the Four Seasons reputation found that running a business in high-priced and highly regulated New York City can be problematic for any business owner. The iconic restaurant's troubles started to show in 2015, when the owner of the property where it sits declined to renew the lease. Dude, not cool. A different restaurant was allowed to take over the property, and the Four Seasons found a new location on 49th Street. However, less than a year after reopening, it was in trouble. Alex Von Bitter, the managing partner, announced that even though the restaurant had been a fixture in Manhattan for 60 years, it would sadly not survive any longer. The Four Seasons served its final meals in August 2018. And flights of angels sing me to thy rest. Shop House Asian Kitchen Back in 2011, Chipotle thought it was a good idea to try their customizable approach to fast food with Southeast Asian Thai cuisine. Shop House Asian Kitchen offered its own take on various rice and noodle dishes, as well as Asian-themed salads. Asian food is generally popular in North America, especially Chinese and Japanese. I'm just 
really feeling this sushi. It's really it's doing something to me. But it seems like the Thai-themed menu never really caught on with customers. The Asian restaurant chain's owner, Chipotle, made the decision to close all 15 of the shop house locations in March 2017. Unfortunately for the Asian-inspired fast food chain, Chipotle felt it had bigger fish to fry because it was in the middle of trying to limit the damage from its very public E. coli contamination problem. Oh, we don't need to talk about that anymore. The outbreak at Chipotle locations had deeply shaken customers' confidence in the fast food chain. I leave you alone for two seconds and this is what you do? There is little doubt that Shop House was a casualty of that pain. Because the Shop House chain didn't make it, the employees at those locations were offered jobs at Chipotle locations near them. But those employees probably wished Shop House Asian Kitchen had not failed to survive the decade. No more Choi. Where'd he go? Roy Choi opened a somewhat healthy fast food restaurant in the Watts area of Los Angeles in 2016. Although Los Angeles is a big market where good restaurants should be able to flourish, Choi's local eatery only lasted two years before having to close down in 2018. Choi had expressed interest in opening in Watts because it doesn't have a lot of restaurants, and businesses in general tend to want to leave the area rather than open up. I guess I should have been paying attention. Choi also opened a local in both Oakland and San Jose. The menu at Choi's eateries consisted mostly of things like tacos, chili bowls, sandwiches, and sundaes. However, too many customers found the prices to be too high. Choi explained that fresh-made meals sourced from local growers with attention to healthier eating cannot really be done as cheaply as traditional fast food chains like McDonald's and Taco Bell can do it. The LA Times food critic named local the restaurant of the year, but some critics were much less kind. I tell you, I don't see it happening. The New York Times critic was pretty blunt in his assessment, judging that local was too pricey and the food wasn't particularly good either. Unfortunately, it seems like Choi may not have appreciated just how reluctant the residents of Watts would be to spend more than they had been used to spending on fast food staples like tacos and sandwiches. No pizzeria locale. Pizza! Pizza, pizza, go and tummy, me so hungry. Even though there is no shortage of good pizza restaurants in the United States, particularly on the East Coast and Midwest, Chipotle decided there needed to be at least one more pizza chain. The project was a collaboration with restaurant owner Bobby Stuckey, and the pizzerias were inspired by authentic pizza restaurants in Naples, Italy. In addition to pizza, the restaurant sold salads and sides such as freshly prepared prosciutto. In June 2018, the CEO of Chipotle announced that as many as 65 of the pizza chain's locations would be closing. I don't want to play with you anymore. At least for the time being, Denver area pizzeria locales were to remain open. That's right, pizzeria locale did not technically completely disappear. If you're in the greater Denver area, you've got three locations to choose from, soon to be four according to their website. This pizza restaurant has not kicked the can just yet. It's just back to being a local Denver pizza joint serving up deliciously fresh pizza pies. Pizzeria Locale is a survivor. Not so Super Mario. What have you done? What have you done? It turned out celebrity chef Mario Batali had much bigger problems than how his restaurants were doing. In 2018, he was the focus of sexual assault complaints that were investigated by the New York City Police Department. A number of women, eight officially, stepped forward and accused the chef of instances of inappropriate touching over a span of nearly two decades. Good grief. I know this is blatantly obvious, but you really are a piece of work. And while Batali did vehemently deny any allegations of sexual assault, he also said in a statement issued by his representative that his past behavior has been deeply inappropriate and that he was sincerely remorseful for his actions. So decipher that as you will. In the midst of this investigation, fans of Batali's food found out that his three restaurants in Las Vegas would close at the end of July. 
The closing of the B&B Ristorante, Otto, and Carne Vino was to impact about 300 employees who would lose their jobs. You have my deepest, deepest sympathies. In the case of these restaurants, it wasn't that they weren't performing well in Las Vegas. The eateries were located in hotel casinos, so there was plenty of foot traffic to keep the restaurants full of customers. However, an investor group that owned part of the restaurants broke off its relationship with Batali, ending the leases on the location the restaurants operated in, forcing them to close up and move out. Batali still has several other restaurants that he owns or has ownership stakes in. Only time will tell on how the investigations will also affect these other establishments. Help yourself to seconds and tap that screen for more great videos. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.